All right, let's make some graphs in Excel. We'll look through an example of each one of those graphs and when we should use them. Here's our example experiment from the tables video. If you haven't watched how to make a table in Excel, go back and watch that to catch up your Excel skills. Okay, so this experiment, they had, students had a Bunsen burner. There we go. Students had a Bunsen burner and they started with a balloon high above the Bunsen burner and slowly lowered it down to see what height it would tolerate before bursting. And they compared rubber, standard rubber balloons with metallic, um, shiny plastic balloons. They ran three trials for each type of balloon and then they took an average. So if we want to make a graph of our data here, let's just wrap the text so we have more space. Okay. If we want to make a graph, we're thinking, okay, which types of data do we have? Well, the independent variable in this experiment was comparing the type of balloon or the material of the balloon, which are definitely categories. We don't have any numerical data here. So as soon as you're thinking categorical data, we're probably going to make a column graph for this. And for a simple experiment like this, we've run three trials. And the whole point of running trials is to um, reduce any possible errors. And so it's really the averages that matter. So all we need to graph is rubber and metallic, which will be our two columns, against the average height that the balloon burst at. So we're highlighting those two columns and then we're holding down control and we can highlight two extra columns or two extra cells down here. So once we've highlighted all the data that we want to include in our graph, we're going to go to insert and here are all our different charts. So here are column and bar charts, line graphs and scatter plots. Definitely we want to pick a column graph. You don't need anything fancy in 3D. Simple two-dimensional is best for science. All right. The first thing is to check that the data makes sense and then we'll work on formatting. So do we have our two categories, rubber and metallic? And then we've got our height. So the height of the bar corresponds to the height of the balloon bursting at. All right. That's fine, like this table, this graph's accurate, but there are a few conventions that we always stick to and follow when we're doing a graph in science. The first thing is no need for horizontal lines here, so we'll click on those lines and delete. We don't need a title here because we're going to put a proper caption above it in our science report. We do need to add axis titles and we add, need to add a line here. Excel tends to not have a, a y-axis line. So let's add that line firstly. You right click on the numbers, the number line in the axis and do format axis. And then we've got plenty of options here. The main thing is we want to go to the formatting of the axis. And we can see there's a line here. We want to have a solid line. And now we've drawn that vertical line. Just like in maths, if you have a number line on your axis, you need to have little tags here so it's easier to read. And for that, you can go back to the axis options, scroll down to tick marks, and those are those tags that stick out to make the number line easy to read. The major type is corresponding to those numbers. So if we do major type on the outside, that's going to put our tick marks facing out, which is the normal convention. You can put in minor tick marks too to make it easier to read. That's many minor tick marks. So we'll probably leave it as without the minors in this one. You can also change how often the minor tick marks happen. So if you were counting in even numbers, you could have minor tick marks halfway between each of those even numbers. But in this case, um, we're counting in fives, so there's no point having five tick marks. It makes it a bit crowded in the number line. 
Okay, that axis looks good. The horizontal axis, if we want to be pedantic, we can change this gray axis line to black. So we'll format the horizontal axis. We'll go to formatting, scroll down to find the line, and then change the color of the line to black. All right, all we need now are axis labels. So you click on the table, on the graph, click the plus, and that can add a whole lot of different chart elements. So we want to add axis titles, and we'll add the horizontal and the vertical. And you can see you can add other things like a legend, error bars, um, which you get to later on in higher level science. For now, all we need to do is edit our axis titles. So this was the height above Bunsen burner centimeters. And then the horizontal was the balloon material. Okay, we'll add the caption in. It's basically the same as our table caption, but obviously we don't use table, we use figure one to show our caption. All right, so that's four column graphs, categorical versus numerical.